Hello everyone and welcome back to the Chassis Variant Series with myself, Critical Rocket, and here we are with the Kodiak 4, the KDK-4. Uh, the KDK-4 is a slight variation again on an established trope with the Kodiak series of mechs in that it comes with generally one very powerful ballistic, usually in the uh, 20 area of damage, and it's usually uh, backed up by a bunch of ER mediums and rounded out with some slightly different weaponry depending on the variant. So this one is two LRM-20s with Artemis fire control, four ER medium lasers, and a single LB-20. So uh, the mech is pretty much a, a guest for all seasons. It can fight at uh, all ranges and can comfortably uh, deliver damage at all ranges. And it's one of the ones, it's probably the one I least like of the Kodiaks, although that's not to say it's bad. Uh, hard point wise, there's actually two ballistics that are available to you in the right torso, so if you want to go for something like a dual UAX uh, setup instead, you can. Um, the rest of the weapons are two energy in each arm and a missile uh, in each arm. Yeah, that's right, yeah, for hard points. And this is, yeah, just a, a decent 100 ton fire support model. They do exist. There are fire support assaults in, in Battletech. Uh, the Zeus is a great example of a fire support assault mech. It's, it was never, for instance, the Zeus was never designed to, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other assault mechs. It was designed to sit on a hilltop somewhere and use its plethora of ranged weaponry to basically pummel something from range. And if needs be, it could get involved in some hand-to-hand -hand combat or just bringing up the rear so it can do a bit of extra damage up close and help its lance mates. But generally, it wasn't meant to go close. And you could argue that this is what this Kodiak is for. It's got some you know, short-range weaponry to defend itself, but primarily this is the kind of thing that would probably be at the back of a star. Quite possibly a command mech, for instance, that uh, the star leader would be uh, in this mech. He'd be the one calling the shots, he'd be the one who would then be, you know, su supporting the rest of his star mates with LRM fire, and then moving uh, to other targets from there. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, little design. It, it's it's nice to actually get mechs with LRMs because in in my time of playing, I know people get very angry at things like LRM atlases or LRM supernovas and stuff like that. And so I think, well, no, these mechs do exist. Uh, all right, yeah, um, custom LRM atlases. Some people would get really annoyed with, which I've never understood. I mean, the whole point is you can build whatever the hell you want to build. Uh, uh, you know, other people's opinions be damned, but. Uh, yeah, it's the, the, these kind of support builds do exist, and uh, they've been highly successful. Uh, so it's nice to have that option as well, because it's it's nice to be able to play an assault mech and you're not expected to go, you know, face tank something for your team. And that's that's what I think the Kodiak Four is is good at doing. Uh, it's a bit like the awesome the AT that has the LRMs. Uh, there's there's a few of them out there. In fact, it, there's actually a fair number of assault mechs in the Inosphere category that do bring some form of long-range missile system. And uh, it's not unusual for the clans, really, to do the same thing. Obviously, custom-wise, you're probably going to drop the LRMs, probably have something a bit better, maybe some streaks or SRMs, possibly even ATMs at this, at this point. Since ATMs do seem to be the best middle ground uh, between bringing a long-range fire support weapon and then something that can just do a horrendous amount of damage at medium to short ranges. So, yeah. Um, it's still hot. It still suffers from all the usual Kodiak issues. The ballist... <coughs> Oops, sorry. A really weird sharp dry point in my throat. Uh, yeah, uh, the, it still suffers from the fact that it's got the, the wide torsos and it'll blow up at a heartbeat as soon as it gets focused down. It feels under armoured, but I don't know if that's just my piloting. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the, the ballistic is high mounted. The missiles, however, are arm mounted, so you do have to worry a little bit about the height of the mech and the positioning of the arms before you fire. Because even though the LRMs will arc, you'll still end up in the situation where you could plough all those missiles into the back of a friendly and no minimum range. That is a bit of a faux pas. And yeah, you do get other little bits of... Uh, bits and pieces of... Uh, of shenanigans that can go on with your missiles don't quite go where you expect them to, so you have to be aware of that. Even with extra heat sinks, this this mech just never really feels like it can handle the heat of the 40R mediums. I do wonder now uh, if I take it when these uh, PTS changes, if they get implemented by PGI uh, with the the clan energy, like let's call everyone was calling them nerfs. Um, I've not tried it myself. I know that at the time of recording this, the the servers were open. There was a reward. Uh, for playing. I love it when they incentivize, <laughs> when it's like, 
we can't get enough. We know we're not going to get enough people to try this now. Um, let, let's face it, because you, you're sat in the PGI office and you're sort of like, well, we need to test. We want to test these changes. We want the community feedback on these things. So, not only do they have trouble getting people interested because the forums immediately lit up with just people going like, huh? But th then it's sort of like, oh, no one's going to test this now because everyone's already made a decision before they've even tried it. <laughs> so now it's like, quick. Do a thing where we'll give them some money and a warhorn. <laughs> it's just like that, that's the only thing they can do. It's like, oh shit, quick, uh, give them freebies. If if they participate, we'll give them some sea bills. And it's like, oh okay, so yeah. And I'm sure plenty of people will test it. I I've, I'm not really asked to be honest. I've been to, through so many testing iterations over the years since I run over in stock. It doesn't bother me. Uh, all my stock weapons and stuff. I just yeah, I just do that. That's that's the weapons it comes with. That's what I'm gonna run, so it doesn't bother me. But in the case with with the Kodiak, I think it could have actually suffer quite badly from these changes. Uh, you know, the the more heat than damage that's produced by some of the clan laser weapons could really affect the Kodiak because it does have an emphasis on its ER mediums. Nearly every version of it, I think, no, in fact, every version of it has at least four, and some of them have eight or nine of those weapons. So it could end up severely backfiring on them, you know? It, it might it might not work out well for the poor Kodiak. The Care Bear stare. You know, it's just not going to work out for them. So, uh, yeah, I don't think there's much left to this one. This was uh, this was the match that meant it wasn't in the Glorious Domination sub-series. And honestly, I'm glad about that. I don't like having all wins all the time anyway, so... Yeah, that was fine. I didn't mind that. So, yeah. It was good. I still recommend it. It's still got plenty of options for you, and uh, it, it's it's a Kodiak. It's not bad. It's a good mech. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you have a good week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.